Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. My 1991 Chevy square body suburban. No, it's not too big. It's pretty big, but it's not too big. Today I'm gonna to be doing a full tour of well my car right here, you know what I'm saying? To give you guys a little bit of an overview as to what this car is and just the history behind it though. It is well a 1991 Chevy square body suburban as said. It is a 2500 model, even though I do realize that the 2500 model didn't even exist until the square bodies of the next generation, but this is what a 2500 model would be. So as such, it's 10 lug, not, I wanna say six lug. It's got a 350 under the hood, no AC. It's an old DOT truck. It was owned originally by the DOT from 1991 to honestly, I don't know. But then after the DOT was done with it for about the next 15, 20 years, it was owned by a guy who did roofing. This was his only truck for roofing. So he had a roof rack and everything like that. And the back of the truck right here is a little bit scratched up. You can definitely tell he had ladders in the back and everything like that kind of thing. But after he had it, he ended up sitting in his yard for a couple years because he retired. And then after sat in his yard for a couple years, it ended up got, getting bought by a guy who bought this as his daughter's first car. I was a little bit surprised when I heard that myself, I will admit. But uh, his, his daughter didn't like it very much. So it ended up sitting in his yard for the next two, three years as well. But he did a lot of work for the car. Not only are these rims his, he also changed the spark plug and spark plugs and did basically everything mechanically that you would want somebody to do to this car. He did it. So basically when I bought this, I really didn't have much to worry about besides the radiator failing and meeting, me needing a new uh, brake slave cylinder. Overall though, certainly no complaints on my behalf and I certainly am glad to own it. To uh, say what I paid for this, it was originally listed on Craigslist for 3,500 bucks, but I didn't pay that. I paid 2,500 bucks. So certainly no complaints on my behalf. And uh, I do think without further ado, it is now time, now that I've gone ahead and given you guys a little bit of an overview of what the car is and everything like that, I think it's time to go ahead and show you what this car is actually like. And after that, after I show you guys a, a, a full tour of the interior of the car, the exterior of the car, everything like that, we're gonna go ahead and take it on a drive and uh, let you guys know what riding in a 1991 Chevy square body suburban is actually like. This is in the last two years of the square body suburban and well, certainly can't complain. I'm not complaining, that's for sure, you know what I'm saying? But I think I'm gonna go ahead and just start with the engine bay. Gotta go ahead and just open the door right here and get the hood all popped. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the engine bay. As said, the engine that is under the hood is a 350. It's not a 454. It's not the 6.2 liter diesel or anything like that. It's the smallest engine you can get, which is still not really that small. I wanna say the 350 is like, what, a 6.2 or something like that? I really have no clue. It's still a huge engine, even though it is literally the smallest engine you can get. There's really not much to say about the engine bay. It's completely stock. There's really not much going on. As you guys can see, the uh, brake uh, booster, whatever, it's uh, completely new. Nothing uh, nothing old there or anything like that except for the actual reservoir. That's going next. I got to replace that next, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the radiator is also new. The radiator cap is not new, but the radiator itself is new. It was leaking a lot of oil when I, uh, a lot of oil, not a lot of oil. It was leaking a lot of coolant when I first bought it. And I was looking and I was like, what's going on kind of thing. And I saw a couple cracks, it was leaking out the front. So I got it replaced. It was really cheap though. Maintenance on this car is really cheap. I didn't want to do it myself. So I just paid somebody to do it. And honestly, it was totally worth it to just pay somebody too much of a pain to replace stuff. And it's got a battery. I didn't replace it. Previous owner replaced it. Haven't needed to replace it. And this was sitting for about a month because I just got back from vacation and it started right up. It started easier than my Camry. I was so happy. That's pretty much the engine bay. If we want to take a look over here though, we can see that usually there'd be another pulley right when this little hold right here where my finger is or where my hand is right there. That would usually be where the AC is and it's missing. Uh, that is because this car is completely stock. Stock, not completely stock. Uh, this car is completely stock. Uh, it's the stock steel edition, which is basically the base model. And it, it came from the factory with no AC. So the AC on this car isn't broken. It just literally has no AC, which is honestly something you cannot say about a lot of cars, especially from the last 25 years or so in the United States. 
but that's pretty much all there is to the engine bay. In all honesty, the wiring is kind of a mess. That's another thing I need to do. The wiring is definitely not the greatest uh, in here and everything like that kind of thing. The original jack for this car is also right here. I want to say that this is the jack. It doesn't look like it's ever been taken out, and honestly, I seriously doubt that it's ever been taken out, but that's pretty much all there is to the engine bay. I'm going to go ahead and close the hood and go ahead and just start showing around the exterior of the car and everything like that. So as we can tell, this car is, well, DOT yellow. As said, it was an old DOT car, which is why it's DOT yellow. Honestly, I love the color of this car. It's got some patina and everything like that kind of thing. It's a 30-year-old car. It makes sense. The uh, front grill has been replaced. Uh, the previous owner replaced this because he said that the uh, original one was not really in the greatest shape or anything like that. I don't really like the whole knockoff plastic and everything like that kind of thing. Not really my thing. But he said this whole thing was like 40 bucks. Honestly, not a bad deal. I just don't really like how it looks. So when I have the chance to get an original grill and everything like that, I'm going to replace this with an original grill. I just like the whole original look and everything like that. I say that, but I really like these rims as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's pretty much all there is in the front. Funnily enough, though, he said that the ribbon right here, the Chevy ribbon right there, since this is actually like a copyrighted piece and everything like that, the grill was 40 bucks, and then the ribbon was also 40 bucks. So you got this tiny piece for 40 bucks, and then you get the whole grill for 40 bucks, which I found pretty amusing. He also put a uh, suburban plate on it, and metal bumpers, of course. Metal bumper game for life. If I ever hit anybody, I'm coming off pretty good. I gotta be honest, y'all. And uh, next up, I think I'm just going to go ahead and move to the side right here. We can see we've got some rims. These are American racing rims with some all-terrain TA, good, rich, expensive tires that honestly I'm not looking forward to paying uh, when they need to be replaced. But these are brand new. Uh, not brand new anymore, but when I bought the car, they were brand new. I think over the course of the three years the previous owner uh, had it, he only put about 300 miles on this car overall. And most of those 300 miles were illegal miles because he didn't really have this registered for about two years until the year when I bought it. And that's when he had it registered because he wanted to make sure the person who bought it could actually drive it and everything like that to, 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 take, a, to take a test drive and everything like that. But uh, as I said, it's a 10 lug, not a six lug or anything like that kind of thing. He also replaced some of the new suspension parts. Some of the new suspension parts look decently new, but we can see right here, the inner fender is very rusty right there. Definitely, uh, I'm gonna be replacing the inner fender for this right here and everything like that. I have the inner fender in the back of the car right now, but uh, that needs to be replaced. The other side has already been replaced and the two back ones have already been replaced. That was all the previous owner, can't take credit for that. But I'm glad he did it because I don't really have a lift that can actually lift this car right now. So I'm gonna have to buy a lift so I can actually replace uh, the uh, inner fender and everything like that. Uh, moving on to the side right here, we have just the normal mirror. Of course, the best thing about this car, you got smoker vents. You got smoker vents. Best thing about this car, they're very squeaky. But that is definitely like the best thing about this car. Not only can it tow like 10,000 pounds, we also get smoker vents, which is just like the best thing ever. I gotta play on y'all. Uh, just moving on to the back, ignore all the stuff in here. I'm not opening this door or anything like that during this video. There's just too much stuff in it. No point in showing you all. The back seat though is in really, really good condition because not only did the DOT never use it, but also the guy who had it as a roofing, he had the seat down all the time kind of thing. So the seat in the back is in amazing condition. One of the most mint uh, rear seats I've seen for a Chevy Suburban ever kind of thing. So certainly no complaints on my behalf. We just have the uh, filler cap right here. It's, I got a locking one so nobody can steal my gas because this has a 35 gallon gas tank. Cost me, when gas is cheap, $120 to fill up. When gas is expensive, it's like $150 to fill up. And I always, the gas stations around here for whatever reason, I don't know why, but they always max out at $100. So I always have to do two different uh, I always have to put in my car twice because they max out on 100 bucks. I'm like, what's going on kind of thing. Don't you guys know some cars still have 35 gallon gas tanks? It's ridiculous. Moving on to the back though, we can tell that this is, this is, this is not uh, carbureted. This is indeed fuel injected. They're super early fuel injection and everything like that kind of thing. Just a Chevy back there, suburban fuel injection, because that used to be a selling point. Uh, we can see a couple cracks on the back, but once I get this door opened up in a little bit, I'll go ahead and cover as to why that happened. Barn doors back here. I love barn doors. Don't get me wrong. I really like the whole flip down tailgate and everything like that, but barn doors certainly are just so cool. So certainly no complaints on my behalf. And they open pretty good, but I'll get to some of the issues with them opening at the moment. But thankfully it's all fixable. You know what I'm saying? Moving on to this side, the, head, uh, the lights are in very good shape. The uh, brake light back here, this is out. I need to, I need to fix this brake light, but thankfully the, uh, the actual running lights when the lights are on work great. Uh, side exit exhaust, of course. Uh, love the side ex exit exhaust. So when you're uh, when you're standing by the back of your car 
and you're taking stuff out of the back when your car's running and everything like that, you don't get your legs burnt. That's like the worst feeling ever. Had it happen to me before, not great. We can just see right here, sticker. I made this sticker in high school. Of course, gotta have the sticker. I put this on every single one of my cars. And then I've just got a van sticker on this side as well. Pretty much just a bunch of other trash in the back. Well, it's not really trash because this is all of the interior parts I need along with my spare tire, which honestly is probably a pretty good thing to have in the back of my car. And we can see there's only one window with tint. That's because now I didn't I didn't put this tint on. The previous owner decided to put the uh, the tint on, and then he gave up after one window. He said, "You know what? I'm done with this. I don't want to tint any other windows. It was such a pain in the ass." He said. So he said, "I would much rather just pay somebody else to tint my windows." So as such, there's only one window tinted. But that's pretty much all there is to the car. Of course, there's two smoker vents. So I think we're gonna go ahead and move from the exterior to the interior. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this door open right here. And uh, the interior of the car is pretty good, not gonna lie. It's in pretty mint shape, I, I say that, and it's not really in super mint shape or anything like that kind of thing. Definitely needs some work, that is for sure. We can just see there's no carpeting down here or anything like that. The glove box is non-existent. This is the ECU, computer, whatever. It's supposed to be mounted up here. It's down here right now because it, it used to be zip tied in. I found the zip ties where it used to be zip tied in. And I guess something got unplugged or anything or something like that. Common issue, of course, there's a massive ashtray. Sadly, this does not work. The cigarette lighter does not work, but of course you guys can tell I've been using this ashtray quite a bit. As said, there's no AC and the air barely works as well because none of the tubing is set up. So when I'm driving this car and it's raining outside and my windows be fogging up, the only thing I can do is roll down my windows. Even if it's raining, that's the only way to get this car not to fog up because, well, None of the tubes are set up or anything like that. I've got to handle those. Steering wheel, there's no cruise control or anything like that. This is the base model of the base model, so there's no cruise control, nothing like that. I'm lucky I get uh, I'm lucky I get a, a parking brake. I've got some Chevy floor mats from the previous owner as well. These are great, love them. And as you guys can tell, I've just got a little bit of a glove compartment, or I guess not glove compartment right here. It's uh, more of an armrest and everything like that for the bench seat because, of course, this doesn't have a folding armrest or anything like that, like a lot of more modern bench seats do have. And as you guys can tell, moving it out of the way, there is indeed a, well, there, there's a there's a little bit of a uh, of a towel right here. Now you guys might be wondering, why is there a towel on my chair? Did I accidentally take a poop on my chair and I'm covering up the stain? The answer is actually a lot more intriguing. It's actually not. It's, um, yeah, that's why I have a towel on my seat. Uh, they, these seats definitely need to be reupholstered and I actually have all of the reupholstery materials in the back of my car, in the back of this car right here, but uh, I don't know how to reupholster myself. I'm not really good at sewing or anything like that, and I honestly don't really have the space or time to reupholster this right now. So once I have some money, I'm gonna pay somebody to reupholster it. Uh, the entire car, pretty much. I wanna get the carpeting in and everything like that kind of thing, get a headliner going, because there's no headliner. Lots of exposed wires just zip tied in. Uh, they were all hanging really low when I first bought the car, but I zip tied them all in, so they're all good now. Zip ties, they solve everything, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the interior in all honesty. As you guys can see, the dash is cracked, everything like that. I have a, um, a temperature gauge right here. This is aftermarket because the temperature gauge right here doesn't work, but thankfully my other two gauges do work. No um, RPM gauge or anything like that, no tachometer, but I'm planning on adding one probably like right here or something like that in the future, just simply because I'd like to know what my RPMs are and everything like that. Of course, when you want to put on your lights, you just pull it like that. Love it, you know what I'm saying? Love it. And it's a three-speed auto. It's not a manual. I don't know how to drive manual. I really need to learn, but I don't know how to drive manual. So it's a three-speed auto instead. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the front of the interior. Of course, got to get my black ice going, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it also didn't come with a, a um, it also didn't come with a, uh, a rear view mirror when I bought it. It did not have a rear view mirror. In fact, it actually did have a rear view mirror, but it was in this box right here. So I used to have a P71. I had a spare mirror for the P71. And so I just took my P71 mirror and I just glued it to, well, the glass. And honestly, it works pretty well. It's pretty much the exact size I need. And uh, I did an okay job at cleaning up the glue, I guess, but pretty happy with the P71 mirror, can't complain. As said though, I'm gonna go and walk around to the other side. As said though, I'm not gonna be showing you guys the, uh... actually, you know what, I might as well go ahead. Yeah, the doors have to be slammed quite hard. I've gotta replace, the, uh, the knuckles right here, they're missing all the brackets and everything like that, so they rattle around when I drive as well. But uh, these are gonna be replaced, but I've gotta take off the entire interior piece right here to actually get to the piece on the inside, which will make this fall out. But I have 
all the pieces to actually do this just i haven't had the time or wanted to in this heat because it's pretty hot right now uh to actually replace these but maybe i'll do that over the winter and everything like that but i do think i'm actually going to go ahead and open up the side right here you guys can tell these are pretty much all just super cracked and everything like that kind of thing this needs to be replaced as well and i'm just going to go open the door real quick you guys can tell the badges were removed and i'm pretty much just using the back seat right now for storage nobody can ride back here or anything like that which is honestly a bad thing because the front seat belt right here the front seat belt don't work it don't extend so when we're going for a drive later i'll be wearing a seat belt but uh my friend brandon behind the camera shout out i'll go and put his instagram uh down there and everything like that kind of thing and uh he's not gonna be wearing a seat belt so uh, if we get in a crash i'm uh, i'm gonna be okay but he's gonna be dead sorry sorry my man <laughs> my apologies but i've pretty much just been using this for storage but that back seat is in great condition a little bit of slime and stuff back here probably from like some roofing tar or something like that i gotta clean that as well this is a whole new foam for the front seat and everything like that got all like just a bunch of random knickknacks spare parts back here my seat i usually use to record just a, a tool bag that i uh that I put all my tools in and my lunchbox for my lunch earlier today. Skateboard backpack that I carry everything in and uh, basically just got a bunch of other stuff back there. This is my um, my inner fender for the front uh, right. Got my glove box right there. All the carpeting I need for the car along with all of the seat covers and everything like that that I'm gonna be, have put on. And uh, a bunch of spray paint stuff. The previous owner started spray painting the back of the car. Not the exterior, but the interior, which I think I'm gonna go ahead and show you all now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the back door opened up and go ahead and show y'all what the issue actually is. Now, if you guys can tell down here, my weather stripping is coming off just a little bit. It is what it is, but that leads to a couple more problems than you might think. Because when I open up the back, and watch, this is gonna be the one time it doesn't all come off and everything like that. When I open up the back, as predicted, this is the one time, oh, nope, it's coming off. As you guys can tell, pretty much none of this is connected. It never connects, it doesn't work, but we can just see, just opens up like a normal barn door. Got my trash right here, going to throw that so it doesn't fall out. Going to open up the other barn door as well. There we go, there we go. This side does just fine because there's like no weather stripping. There's like no weather stripping on this side. So it does just fine, it doesn't fall off. But that side definitely needs a little bit of work. But as you guys can tell, there's plenty of space in the back, love it. Plan on making this into like a camping rig and everything like that kind of thing. Uh, my overall plans for this car in the future, it, when I have a ton of money, when I have a shit ton of money and everything like that kind of thing, I am planning on putting a 12 valve or a Duramax in it. That would be amazing. I love turbo diesels. And as such, I'd love to have a turbo diesel in this car as well. I think Cummins, um, Cummins Duramax square bodies are amazing. And as such, I'd love to put a, uh, like a 12 valve or a, uh, what is it? A, is it a 6BT, a 4BT? I don't know, probably a 12 valve. 12 valves are pretty cool. Um, 12 valve turbo or a Duramax or something like that. I really don't know. I need to drive some Cummins and some Duramax trucks before I decide what engine I actually want to put in. But uh, that's pretty much the plan. Put that all in and everything like that. Put a 55 gallon tank in the back so I can not have to ever fill up, but also so I can spend $200 on a full tank of gas. And um, those are pretty much just the plans for the future. Just make it into a camping slash road trip slash towing rig. Right now, if we look under the license plate, right here which hopefully i remember to blur out but uh we can see there is no sort of uh, tow hitch or anything like that sadly and the underside of the car is really not all that rusty kind of thing for being a dot truck for probably being out in the salt and everything like that it's really not all that rusty and it's actually less rusty under there than my aerostar was which is very surprising and a lot of you guys might also be wondering where's the aerostar kind of thing well i sold the aerostar i talked about it in a little bit in a previous video but if you guys missed that video I sold the Aerostar, started having some head gasket issues, and um, so I sold it. And I bought this before I sold it, and then I traded the Aerostar for the Camry, uh, plus some on top kind of thing. I did make a decent profit on that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much back this far. I just want to make it into sort of a camping, towing, do anything, go anywhere, anytime rig. Basically, what I want this truck to be is my bug out vehicle that will run, even if there's an EMP or something like that kind of thing. I want this to be my bug out vehicle. And it really is the perfect vehicle for it. If I need to get the hell out because of a hurricane, because of a tornado or something like that, throw everything in the back. I can carry like 20 people in this car and just go kind of thing. And it'll tow everything. Hook up a trailer, put another car on there. It's all good to go. And that's pretty much the plan for, well, this car right here is just to have it be my do anything, anywhere, anytime, start up every time vehicle. I say that and now I'm gonna start it up and it's not gonna work for the first time ever. 
but that certainly would be what it be. I do suppose that's good content nonetheless, but I'm gonna go ahead and just close the back. As you guys can tell, the previous owner started Rhino uh, lining the back doors and everything like that, but I'm gonna go and close these doors just like that. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all how I have to close the back door right here. So I have to make sure one of these is like done like that. I have to make sure this is good. And then I have to slam it very hard. And the reason that this is has a crack and everything like that is because the rope on the inside that y'all might have seen, if you disconnect that rope, it just goes down and it just goes like this kind of thing. So it just goes down, hits this right here. So that's why there's a crack because the previous owner, the roofing guy, um, he probably just opened it way too fast and it just cracked and everything like that kind of thing. It is what it is. Just a little bit of sealant and everything like that should have it be all good. There we go. I think it's locked. I think it's all good. I'll have to check it after the video. But overall, that's pretty much all there is to the interior, their exterior, and everything like that. Some other things to mention about this car, the exhaust needs to be replaced. I want to straight pipe it, but I also don't really want to buy an exhaust for an engine I want to rip out eventually kind of thing. So I'm just going to let the exhaust eventually disintegrate and straight pipe itself. Um, but if we look under the car over here, we can just see that the exhaust is uh, quite literally just hanging in there. Quite literally. It's uh, all falling apart and everything like that. There's really not much to it. But uh, yeah, it's dying just a little bit, but it certainly is what it is, that is for sure. But I think that's all there is really to the car. Sadly, can't really take a look at the top of the car very well or anything like that. But uh, as we can see, there's just a little bit of patina on the top of the car. There's bolts right here where a roof rack used to be from the uh, roofing guy and everything like that. And overall, I love this car, y'all. I really do love this car. Uh, square bodies and uh, some just main, mainly Suburbans, I will be honest, I love old uh, crew cab long bed square bodies as well kind of thing. I'm a big sucker for crew cab long beds with a uh, box on the back kind of thing. Love those. But uh, Suburbans are definitely one of those cars I always saw when I was a kid. And oh, there's another Suburban over there. I don't even know if that's a Suburban. That's a really old Suburban. That's really sweet. And that's a panel version. Man, that's nice. Oh my goodness. That is sweet. Got the barn doors too. Got the tent going. That is sweet. You know what I'm saying? That is sweet. I completely lost my train of thought though. What was I talking about? But I think I'm gonna go and talk about what my plans are. As I mentioned, I want to put a Cummins, like I would love to put a 12 valve in or something like that kind of thing. Just make it into even better of a tow rig. This thing can already tow like 10,000 pounds, probably at five miles an hour, but it can supposedly tow 10,000 pounds either way. So I can basically tow whatever car I want. I could tow another one of these with this if I really wanted to. Uh, so I said, I wanna put a Cummins in and everything like that kind of thing. Uh, after, uh, but before that, of course, I wanna get the interior all done. I'm gonna get all of the windows tinted to probably 15, 20%. Um, I just want tint and I'm gonna get ceramic so the interior of the car doesn't heat up as much during the summer because where I live, it gets very hot and humid during the summer and anything I can do to reduce that, I will do. Probably I wanna put on a um, quick release steering wheel as well, just something that's the same size as this, but quick release just to have a little bit more of a thief repellent and everything like that simply because I'm pretty sure if I really wanted to, I could start this with a screwdriver. Uh, it's not exactly like there's a lot of security measures in this truck, that is for sure. And it's not even a manual, which really is the best security man measure you can get for your car these days in the United States, at least. Um, probably just put all the carpeting in, get it tinted, everything like that kind of thing. Get a new, uh, get either a dash cover or put in a new dash. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave in the bench seat and everything like that. And I think those are pretty much all of my plans. Pretty much just keep it mostly stock. I'm not looking at lifting this or anything like that kind of thing. It's a two wheel drive, it's not a four wheel drive. So there's really no point in lifting it either way. This is pretty much lifted enough for me to hop curbs and everything like that. I don't really need anything else. I like the rims, not gonna change out the rims or anything like that unless I, have, for some reason, have $10,000 that I wanna spend on some like, I don't know, 30 inch rims or something like that. Get like a 15 inch lift, put it on, get it going, uh, squat it. Yeah, I think squatting would be pretty sick, right? For sure. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to squat the truck. But I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show off for the actual truck itself. I just need to take some glue off and everything like that. So I think it's time to take it for a ride. You ready to uh, go for a ride? Yeah. Big bet, big bet. Sounds like a plan. So as said, though, there's no seatbelt on your side. So uh, let's hope I don't get in the crash. <laughs> and there's no AC. So it's going to be pretty warm as well. Just make sure to slam it as well. Because uh, that's uh, when I was driving around to for the intro. The door actually started rattling loose and I was like, oh my goodness, this is not good. But uh, I saw you reaching for the seatbelt. <laughs> there's no point, there's no point. I'm putting my seatbelts on though. Well, but uh, Me oh. and your phone are going flying. Oh, uh, it is what it is, <laughs> oh well. Well, let's go ahead and get it started up. This thing purrs, I love it. Starts right up. 
instantaneously. Starts faster than my 1999 camera. I love it, y'all. I love it. It's got the stock exhaust, so it's not super loud or anything like that. But I'm going to go ahead and release the parking brake right here. Go ahead and put it into drive, which uh, I've got to do the shift links and everything like that. And it doesn't really like this. I've got to replace something to figure out what the issue is with the idling and everything like that. Slight gasoline smell, but it's just an old car. It is what it is. I'll put my sunglasses on and uh, let's start moving. I'm going to go and give it some gas in just a moment. And I think take it out onto an actual road. We're just in a public park right now, which is great for recording. So I'm just going to take a right, just like this.
want rip around in, uh, the windows down kind of thing. It's just the, uh, it's just the vibe. The only really bad thing about this car, in my personal opinion, is one, the gas mileage. I get 10.5 miles per gallon on average, and that's without me gunning it every once in a while, like I am. But, um, and then other than that, no AC. It is what it is, though. I don't need AC. Anyway. Hey, hey, he's going faster than me. What the hell? I can't believe this. And I think I can smell something a little bit. I don't think it's super happy, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn in here. I think it's done getting throttled a little bit for the day. It's definitely uh, a little bit more fragile than I handle, or I definitely handle this car, typically speaking, at least a little bit more fragilely than I do my Camry. I don't give a single crap about my Camry. I gun that everywhere I go. I don't care because it gets 22 miles per gallon no matter what I do. Uh, this, on the other hand, it's a little bit fragile. The alignment isn't great kind of thing. I don't want to break it. Uh, so I do typically treat it a little bit more fragilely, but I love it nonetheless. And uh, overall, yeah, I really like this car. It really is very close to one of my dream trucks. I think really what would set it over the level for being an actual dream car would be it having a turbo diesel once it has a turbo diesel, which I'm not going to be doing until I have a shit ton more money because swapping it's probably going to be like 10, 15 grand. But once I have the chance to swap it and everything like that kind of thing, it really will legitimately be probably one of my dream trucks kind of thing. Uh, of course, I've got multiple dream trucks and everything like that kind of thing, but this is a car, it's it's a square body, it'll run for a long time kind of thing, it'll run with rust in the fuel tank, uh, it'll run no matter what you throw at it kind of thing. I say that and then the next time I try to start it, it's not going to start, so knock on big wood. But um, yeah, it's been great so far, and I uh, can't complain, definitely not looking at getting rid of this. The only downside I said really is the whole no AC thing and not really getting the best mileage in the world, but in all honesty, that really is just one of those things where it is what it is. It's a, a factor of the car, and once I put in a, a turbo diesel, it'll get, it'll get better gas mileage. I say that in fucking diesel is like 550, whereas gas is like 370, so I think it's actually probably cheaper to run this car right now with just getting 10.5 miles per gallon on gas, getting like probably 20 with a diesel engine kind of thing. It's, it's probably a lot cheaper to just run this on uh, gas right now than it is diesel, just because diesel is so fucking crazy right now. It's insane. But uh, yeah, no complaints on my behalf. I love this car and it really is one of my dream trucks. Uh, hopefully next up, hopefully the next car I'll be buying will be my dream car. W123 Mercedes Benz uh, 300TV sedan. And so as you guys can tell, it's a little bit rattly. Well, I'm just slow down over this train track to make sure I ain't gonna get hit by no train or nothing like that. Back doors do not rattle open. Just going to give it a little bit of gas. This cop's sitting there earlier, but not right now. I really do have no complaints on my behalf, but 
I think that's pretty much the full tour of my 1991 Square Body Suburban. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I uh, certainly have enjoyed making it, that is for sure. Thank you very much once again to uh, my friend Brandon for recording the video and everything like that. Uh, his uh, Instagram is uh, kid.shaggy. I'll put it uh, in a little bit of a photo and I'll leave it linked in the description down below if you guys want to go check him out or anything like that. He's got a pretty sick Mazda 3, uh, which I highly recommend. It's a, it's a pretty good car. It's manual. Gotta have a manual. I say as my car is not a manual. Sure. But um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching though, y'all. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show y'all. Make sure to leave a comment down below what you guys think of the Square Body Suburban and everything like that. And uh, yeah. But I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for watching my uh, tour of my 1991 Square Body Suburban. No, it's not too big. I need a bigger car. I need a Freightliner. But um, yeah, this is pretty much one of my dream trucks. And uh, I don't really think there's a much to it that I don't really like besides the obvious AC and gas mileage. But uh, thank you very much for watching my tour of the 1991 Square Body Suburban that I own. If you guys enjoyed this video, of course, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my uh, my other channel, and my PO box all in the description down below. You know what I'm saying? Go check it all out. But yeah, thank you very much for watching this video, y'all. Thank you very much for watching the tour of my car. And to the next one, stay safe and peace and everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying?